exam sites. FDNY Headquarters, 9, Metro Tech Center Brooklyn, New York. Enter through the Flatbush Avenue entrance, between Myrtle Avenue and Tech Place. See booklet for map. Sample questions. The following questions represent the format of the exam questions, not the content of the real exam. 1. Which of the following are allowed to be used while taking a certificate of fitness examination at 9, Metro Tech Center? 1. Cellular phone. 2. Study material booklet. 3. Reference material provided by the FDNY. 4. MP3 player. A. 3 only. B. I. 2 and 3. C. 2 and 4. D. I only. Only reference material provided by the FDNY is allowed to be used during certificate of fitness examinations. Therefore, the correct answer would be A. You would touch A on the computer terminal screen. 2. If the screen on your computer terminal freezes during your examination, who should you ask for help? A. The person next to you. B. The firefighters. C. The examiner in the testing room. D. The computer help desk. If you have a computer-related question, you should ask the examiner in the testing room. Therefore, the correct answer would be C. You would touch C on the computer terminal screen. 3. If you do not know the answer to a question while taking an examination, who should you ask for help? A. The person next to you. B. The firefighters. C. The examiner in the testing room. D. You should not ask about test questions since FDNY staff cannot assist applicants. You should not ask about examination questions or answers since FDNY staff cannot assist applicants with their tests. Therefore, the correct answer would be D. You would touch D on the computer terminal screen. 1. Introduction Buildings or parts thereof occupied or operated to be occupied by emergency shelters shall be continuously patrolled by a fire guard. Every area of the building shall be patrolled at least once every hour. F-02 holders may additionally be assigned to monitor the areas in a shelter in which a fire protection system is out of service for fires. Fire guards are responsible for the safety of all shelter occupants and employees by eliminating fire hazards and assisting in the evacuation of occupants during drills and in case of an emergency. Fire guards are responsible for making sure that fire safety regulations are being complied with in the shelter. They should be familiar with and knowledgeable of the location and operation of all fire alarm systems in the shelter in which they are employed. Fire guards are supervised by the impairment coordinator, coordinator of fire safety and alarm systems or fire safety director on the premises. Fire guards must also maintain records of their patrols. 1.1 F-02 Certificate of Fitness Requirements Buildings operating as emergency shelters have the unique requirement of fire guards on the premises at all times. Fire guards in shelters have a larger span of responsibility than fire guards in most other occupancies. It is imperative that fire guards make consistent patrols as required, and are also knowledgeable about the procedures to follow when performing a fire watch in the case of an out-of-service situation. Prior to the implementation of the F-02 Certificate of Fitness, fire guards in homeless shelters who were on the premises performing patrols on a daily basis held F-44 Certificates of Fitness for fire guards for shelters. F-44 Certificate of Fitness holders were not qualified to perform fire watch in an out-of-service condition. In the past, if such a situation did occur, the building owner would be required to ensure that F-01 Citywide Fire Guard for Impairment Certificate of Fitness holders were on the premises to perform fire watch during the out-of-service condition. The F-02 Certificate of Fitness eliminates the gap between the F-44 and F-01 Certificates of Fitness. F-02 holders are qualified to work in shelters with homeless occupants on a daily basis and to perform hourly patrols, and are additionally qualified to perform fire watch in an out-of-service situation. The information below explains the relationship between the different certificates of fitness. F-44 Fireguards for Shelters Perform Hourly Patrols 
specific to shelters. Not qualified to perform fire watch in out of service situations. F01 Citywide Fire Guard for Impairment. Citywide Certificate of Fitness, non premise related. Qualified to perform fire watch in out of service situations. F02 Fire Guards for Shelters. Qualified to perform hourly patrols in shelters. Qualified to perform fire watch in out of service situations. Citywide Certificate of Fitness. F02 Certificates of Fitness are valid for a period not to exceed three years from the date of issuance. At the end of this period, the certificate expires unless the Commissioner approves its renewal. Please be advised that certificate renewals shall be at the discretion of the Commissioner in the interest of public safety. The Department may review the certificate holder's qualifications and fitness and may require a certificate holder to complete a Department-approved continuing education program and slash or provide other proof of the holder's continuing qualifications and fitness. The use of the word should throughout these study materials generally refers to policies, procedures, and slash or best practices recommended by the FDNY, and may not be a codified requirement. The use of the word shall throughout these study materials generally refers to a requirement of the fire code or the FDNY. 1.2. Denial, non-renewal, suspension, and revocation of certificates. Certificate of fitness holders should be aware that they may be required to demonstrate their knowledge and proficiency in their duties related to their certificate at the time of original and renewal application, and at any time fire department representatives are conducting an inspection of the premises. The fire department can deny, not renew, suspend, or revoke a certificate for misconduct, which would include the failure of the certificate holder to properly fulfill his or her duties for any reason. In addition to any other penalties provided by law, misconduct on the part of an applicant or holder of a certificate of fitness shall be grounds for denial, non-renewal, suspension or revocation of a certificate, and denial of an application for a certificate or the opportunity to take a certificate examination. Such misconduct includes, but is not limited to, the failure of certificate holders to properly fulfill their duties. Any false and fraudulent conduct in connection with an application for a certificate or the duties of a certificate holder, including false or fraudulent statements or submissions, unauthorized changes to or use of a certificate or possession of a fraudulent certificate, cheating on an examination, impersonating another person or allowing oneself to be impersonated. 2. Definitions Building Occupants all persons in the shelter, including employees, clients, staff, and visitors. Central Station Company, a facility that receives alarm signals from a protected premise and retransmits or otherwise reports such alarm signals to the FDNY. Emergency Preparedness Plan, emergency preparedness plans ensure that, in the event of a fire or a non-fire emergency, there are procedures in place that can be timely implemented to provide the information, guidance, direction, and assistance needed to protect the safety of building occupants, including, if necessary, affecting their evacuation, relocation, or sheltering in place. Such emergency preparedness plans shall assure that knowledgeable assistance is readily available on the premises to emergency response personnel responding to a fire or non-fire emergency at the premises. The Emergency Preparedness Plan is also known as the Fire Safety and Evacuation Plan and or Emergency Action Plan. Evacuation, the emptying of a building of all building occupants in response to a fire or an emergency. Fire Alarm System, any system, including any interconnected fire alarm subsystem, of components and circuits arranged to monitor and enunciate the status of fire alarm or supervisory signal initiating devices. Fire Guard, a person holding a certificate of fitness for such purposes, who is trained in and responsible for maintaining a fire watch. Fire Protection System, approved devices, equipment, and systems or combinations of systems used to detect a fire, activate an alarm, extinguish or control a fire, control or manage fire alarm systems, sprinkler systems and standpipe systems. Fire Watch, 
a temporary measure intended to ensure continuous and systematic surveillance of a building or portion thereof by one or more qualified individuals for the purposes of identifying and controlling fire hazards, including detecting early signs of fire, raising an alarm of fire, notifying the department, and performing such other fire safety duties as may be prescribed by the commissioner. Impairment any condition in which a fire protection system cannot perform its designed fire safety function. Fire protection systems include sprinkler systems, standpipe systems, and fire alarm systems. Examples of an impaired sprinkler or standpipe system may include an out-of-service fire pump. An example of an out-of-service fire alarm system may include a shutdown of a floor's fire alarm system detecting devices, to prevent an unnecessary alarm, while torch work associated with construction work is conducted. Impairment coordinator, the person designated by the building owner who is responsible for ensuring that proper notification and safety precautions are taken when a standpipe system, sprinkler system, or fire alarm system is out of service. In the absence of a specific designee, the owner shall be considered the impairment coordinator. Non-fire emergency, a biological, chemical, or nuclear incident or release, declaration of emergency by a lawful authority, explosion, medical emergency, natural disaster, or other emergency affecting the premises or the safety of building occupants. Owner, the owner of the freehold of any real property, as defined in Section 2 of the Real Property Law, or of a lesser estate therein, a mortgage or vendee in possession, assignee of rents, received, executor, trustee, lessee, agent or any other person, firm, or corporation, directly or indirectly in control of real property. Any reference in this code to the owner of any building, structure, or premises shall be deemed to designate collectively any and all of the foregoing, including, but not limited to, the owner of the freehold or lesser estate therein and a managing agent designated by such owner pursuant to Section 27-2098 of the New York City Administrative Code. Owner-slash-occupant responsibility, the owner shall be responsible at all times for the safe maintenance of a building, structure, and premises in accordance with this code. Correction and abatement of violations of this code and the rules shall be the responsibility of the owner. If an occupant creates, or allows to be created, hazardous conditions in violation of this code or the rules, the occupant shall also be responsible for the abatement of such hazardous conditions. Two-way voice communication, a form of transmission in which both parties involved have the ability to transmit information. This is useful during an emergency, and allows staff members to report the conditions of a fire emergency from the fire floor back to the fire safety director or, Coordinator of Fire Safety and Allan Systems in Homeless Shelters, or Fire and Emergency Drill Conductor in the Lobby at the Fire Command Center. Two-way voice communication uses warden phones that are placed at several locations throughout the building, usually near the exit stairways in the building. 3. Fires in Homeless Shelters Homelessness is a significant problem in New York City, and the number of men, women, and children that need shelter continues to rise. In 2013, it was estimated that over 45,000 people spent the night in a New York City homeless shelter and approximately 19,000 of those people were children. In 2012, just 35% of families with children who applied to stay in city shelters were accepted, down from 52% in 2007. The number of people seeking housing in shelters in the city is increasing significantly, and with it comes new fire safety concerns. It is imperative that fire guards ensure that shelters are maintained in a manner that provides for the safety of the residents and employees in the event of a fire or other emergency, to immediately correct or report any fire safety violations that arise and to be familiar with the emergency preparedness plan. Unfortunately, in New York City and elsewhere, disastrous fires have occurred in homeless shelters. Fortunately, the lessons learned from these fires can be used to help prevent them from occurring in the future. Three significant fires that occurred in homeless shelters are listed below. Fire Summary Location, Homeless Shelter in Paris, Texas State, 2009 
A 42-bed shelter housing 28 men caught fire due to ignition of a table inside the shelter that was piled high with donated clothing. More than 20 residents evacuated the shelter as a result of smoke and flames after several men attempted to extinguish the flames with pans of water. There was a heavy smoke condition in the shelter, making it difficult to see and even more difficult to evacuate. Five men who lived on the second floor were killed in the blaze. An investigation of the fire determined that the building had no sprinkler system, fire alarms or smoke detectors. Records indicated that the shelter hadn't been inspected for at least five years, even though inspections were required on an annual basis. The shelter was used as a drop-off point for paper products, rags, clothing, furniture and other material. Lessons learned Periodic fire department inspections should be conducted as required. Excess debris and improper storage is a fire hazard. Lack of fire prevention devices in the shelter increases the probability of fatal fires. Fire Summary Location, Homeless Shelter in Bronx, New York Date, December 7, 2012 and December 9, 2012 At this Bronx, New York shelter, improperly stored mattresses were ignited in two separate incidents only two days apart. The first incident occurred when a child was playing with a match, and set a mattress on fire on the second floor of the building. This was a small fire that resulted in no injuries and was quickly extinguished. The second fire started when another child was playing with matches who also ignited a mattress that had been stored in the building's lobby. Smoke and flames from the resulting fire spread into the stairwell and the upper floor hallways. There were no building-wide alarms or hallway smoke detectors in the building to notify occupants of the fire. Two building occupants tried to use portable fire extinguishers to extinguish the fire but found them empty and inoperable. With the smoke and flames having filled the hallways, many occupants tried to escape by using the fire escapes. However, occupants reported that some of the fire escapes were broken, having missing steps and jammed ladders. The fire resulted in four adults and two children being seriously injured. It was determined that the mattresses that were involved in these fires had not been properly removed from the building. Instead, they were stacked in the lobby and propped against walls in common areas of the building. It was also determined that the fire escapes were not in good working order, many of the fire extinguishers were not operable, and that the building did not have a fire alarm or sprinkler system. All of these factors contributed to the devastation that resulted from this fire. See booklet for pictures. Excess debris and improper storage presents a fire hazard. Lack of a building-wide fire alarm system will cause significant delays in implementing a building evacuation. Fire escapes must be inspected to ensure that they are in working order. Fire extinguishers must be visually inspected monthly to ensure that they are in working order. Fire summary. Location. Homeless Shelter in New York, New York Date August 28, 2012 A homeless shelter in New York City caught fire and required complete evacuation. The fire started when a lit cigarette left unattended by a tenant ignited a mattress on the fourth floor. The fire was quickly extinguished by the building's sprinkler system. One resident suffered from and was treated for smoke inhalation. Fortunately, the fire was confined to a single apartment. The shelter had recently been fined more than $45,000 by the Department of Buildings for safety violations, including a violation for failure to provide sprinkler protection. Records show that the building had seven active building violations at the time of the fire. Lessons learned Periodic fire department inspections should be conducted. Ignition sources, such as lit cigarettes, should not be left unattended. Fire safety education may be beneficial to homeless shelter residents. See booklet for pictures. All three shelter fires demonstrate how important it is for shelter staff to be proactive. Fire guards and other safety staff should make it a priority to identify any potential fire safety violations and correct them before they are identified by the fire department or buildings department.